as a Scottish supporter with uh, plenty to say for himself. And here are the teams now just coming up this tunnel into the uh, thin sunlight that is Wembley this afternoon. That's a long, long tunnel. But now they're coming out into the view of the crowd. Bobby Moncur on the left leading out Scotland and Bobby Moore leading out his English side. Manager Bobby Brown who has kept faith with this man Bobby Moncur as the Scottish skipper in spite of the fact that there are men like Billy Bremner and Frank McClintock also in their side. That's Bobby Clark of Aberdeen, the Scottish goalkeeper, a youngster with tremendous promise. Alan Ball there, you'll see. Davy Robb. Frank Brogan. And there's the man that all Scotland have been waiting to see in a Scottish shirt. Jimmy Johnston of Celtic. The wee wonder, the flying flea, and the man so many Scots are pinning their faith to this afternoon. Here's Hugh Curran, that big, bold, brave, strong striker. Tony Green, who had a very busy midfield game, in fact, against uh, Ireland. And Frank McClintock. His last appearance at Wembley ended in triumph. I wonder if it's going to end in triumph this afternoon. Scotland, who are wearing, for those of you not watching on colour, their traditional shirts of dark blue, white shorts, and dark blue stockings with a red ring. England in white with the black shorts and white stockings. The teams then to be presented to uh, the Marquis of Blandford, an honorary vice president of the FA. There's Bobby Moncur with Bobby Clark of Aberdeen. And Davy Robb, who, well, has got a lot of pace about him. Good, strong striker, might be quite effective with Curran. It's Jimmy Johnston again. Here's Curran, and Curran and Robb might well work out some sort of understanding, and prompted by the little fellow there, Tony Green. Frank McClintock, always inspiring at the back. John Gregg, the Rangers number two, Gregg, uh, who played very much forward against Ireland. I would think we might well see a lot of him uh, as a back player. He's better as a back player than as a front runner. Here's Billy Bremner. Curious thing about uh, Billy Bremner, a lot of Scots say that he never yet has quite reproduced his Leeds United form in a Scotland shirt. Maybe this is the time. Dr Andrew Streven there with the Marcus of Blanford. With Bobby Moore. The flags are still being waved mightily around this arena and they're all Scottish flags. So there's tremendous support for the Scottish side this afternoon. Terry Cooper being presented and Chris Lawler. Peter Storey. What a tremendous uh, end of the season it's been for Peter Storey. And here's Martin Chivers who always seems to do well at Wembley. Jeff Hurst back in the side again and Martin Peters of course who skippered the England side when Bobby Moore was out, that was against Wales on Wednesday night. The Dutch referee, Mr Dorfmans. In scarlet sweaters. And two Dutch linesmen as well. And the crowd now beginning to work themselves up into a real frenzy for the start of this game. And Frank Ray, who conducted the community singing. banners for the moment are pretty well hidden but they'll be out again I'm sure and now the national anthem
teams now get a chance to flex those muscles on this fine-looking Wembley turf. The England side, Chris Lawler coming in at number two. It was a question of uh, Maidley or Lawler, and it's Lawler who's got the number two place. It was also a question of whether Francis Lee would have recovered from, fit from uh, an injury, and he's fit as well. But uh, so much with England looking for goals to put that uh, Wembley performance on Wednesday behind them. Lee clearly is one man, Hurst is another that they'll badly be looking for to score some goals. And, of course, Martin Chivers, who, in fact, in three Wembley performances this spring, has scored five goals, three for England and two for Spurs. The Scottish side, a much more adventurous-looking side, a much better balanced-looking side than lost at home to Northern Ireland in Hampden Park on a Tuesday night with a lot of experience there, particularly in defence, and a lot of inspiration as well. And the sheer inspiration, I suppose, they're looking for from Jimmy Johnston. The first time he's ever played at Wembley, and Frank McClintock, who knows Wembley only too well. Billy Bremner, too, when you think of McClintock and Bremner, two of the great skippers in the first division. And Bobby Moncur, though, is the man who leads Scotland today. Now coming forward for the toss-up. Bobby Moore coming up to uh, toss up as he's done countless times for England. So much national pride at stake and there's so much at stake for both these sides as footballing nations today because England, although they've given so little away in defence over the years, really have perhaps people have lost a little bit of patience with them in their lack of flair and adventure. And certainly when it comes to Scotland, with only two goals from the last eight games and virtually out of the European Nations Cup as well, a victory over England would mean so much to all the fans up in Scotland. And so although England v Scotland always has something special about it, this one really is extra special. The referee, Mr Dortmunds from Holland, the Dutch who produced so many good referees over the last few years, Bright orange ball. Waiting on the centre spot there. And 22 players at the moment a little reluctant to... Uh, maybe they haven't been called up yet by the referee. Well, there was that orange ball that I mentioned just a moment ago. And it's going to be England to kick off. Martin Peters, in fact, the number 11, standing over the ball. Flanked by Ball and by Hurst. Chippers over on the left. Francis Lee towards us on the right. Gordon Banks is already. And so are England, and away we go. Chippers immediately there, challenged by Gregg. And Jimmy Johnston getting his first Wembley touch, but putting it back now to Cooper. Chivers. Trying a little flick inside to find Peters, but it's Frank McClintock to come away for Scotland. Rob. And McFarland to Lawler. Cooley back to McFarland again. Ball to skipper Bobby Moore. Lawler. And McFarland along one forward. Hurst will chase it. Moncur watching it all the way onto his forehead. And now with Jim Brogan. Cormac. Ball seizing on that one. And Bremner in very roughly indeed on Peters. That can only be a free kick to England. A foul by Billy Bremner. And Bobby Moore complaining about the ball already to the referee. Not liking something about it. And the referee agreeing. And so within... Precisely one minute of the start of this game, we look as though we might be getting a substitute ball. So Bobby Moore then to take the free kick with the new ball. Alan Ball. Terry Cooper. Attacked with such flair against the Welsh on Wednesday. That's a good-looking cross there. Jivers going in. And Bobby Clark there for Scotland.
McFarlane poised underneath this one, and Curran with him, and Curran got ahead to it, not it on for Cormac. Tony Green had such a busy game against the Irish Green without too much support. Shaking off Lawler there, Brogan putting it through first time to Cormac, a nice little Scottish move building up. Green now, across that English goal! And Bobby Moore rising above the lot. Rob trying to turn it out towards Johnston, but Cooper's there for England. But some quite fluid and interesting build-up there by the Scots, and Greg falling to his knees, or was it McClintock? And nodding it away. Now Johnston for Scotland. Greg has gone outside him, there's the flick to John Greg, pounding forward now for Scotland across that English goal. Cut out easily, though, by Bobby Moore. Cooper. Moore again. Peters. Scottish supporters not taking kindly to that bit of safety first, but here's Banks. And a free kick to England. Must have been a bit of pushing there by Bobby Moncur on this fellow, Martin Chivers. Bobby Moore to take it, and take it fairly quickly. Hurst, or rather Chivers, was pulled back there by Moncur, physically pulled back. Surprised he got away with that one. But it's Clark now for Scotland. Curran and McFarlane poised underneath it. McFarlane getting ahead to it, not quite as he wanted to. But it's back with Banks. And now with Bobby Moore. Story. Lee coming for this one and Brogan going with him, both tumbling over. And again, the Dutch referee didn't like the way that the Scottish player, this time uh, Jim Brogan, clattered into the back of Francis Lee. Tough Scottish player, playing at number three now, but also plays very effectively as a number six. And Moore with the free kick for England. Moncur getting his head to it, now it's Brogan again. Forward to Green. Rob, but Lee for England, to ball. Flick forward there for Peters, and now a nice little one-two developing there between Hurst and Peters, and Peters couldn't quite get in on the end of it, and Johnston surprisingly deep, picking it up now for Scotland. That pass was easily read by Ball, and now England coming forward at some pace. Hurst. Four English forwards are up there if Hurst gets this across quickly, but it looks as though he might try Cooper. Now Cooper trying to get it across. But into the arms once more of Clark, and Peters not happy with it, wanting Cooper to lift it. And away goes Jimmy Johnston. Well, that leaves it nicely for Bremner, but the whistle had gone. England's free kick. Five minutes gone, no score. Bobby Moore. Chivers, who is being so closely watched by uh, the nearest Scottish defender each time to pick him up. Story, Lawler, and Moore. Again, it's on for Cooper, away to his left, but Peters now finding Cooper. Rob to knock that one away for Scotland. McFarlane to follow it in. Green, nice little ball there by Green to Bremner on the break. And Curran's gone on ahead of him, and over on the left is Cormac, and Cormac is struggling to keep it in, and he couldn't do it. Cormac of Nottingham Forest, in fact missed the game against Ireland because of flu, but the sprightly way that he was moving up that week then looks as though he's made a complete recovery. And England's throw with Chris Lawler. Brogan with his head, Curran, trying a drag back, but Lawler wouldn't give him time enough for it. Now it's Moore. Cooper. Straight onto the chest of Greg. Johnston. might have fallen against the arms of uh, Lee, but the referee said no, and he was right there, and Ball trying to get Hurst away. Good sterling work there by McClintock, getting Scotland out of trouble, but it's Bobby Moore trying to play it quickly for Chivers. Moncur seems to be taking Chivers.
Brogan to Clark. McClintock. Brogan. And Green to McClintock. This time Brogan making the run and a good ball there by McClintock. Well cut out though by Storey and down goes Storey and Green fastening quickly onto this loose one but perhaps getting a little too excited himself. But certainly there's plenty of life and confidence about Scotland in the first uh, seven minutes or so of the game. Yes, in fact, they're playing the ball about very quickly and catching the Indian defence out here and there. They really are moving the ball and taking chances at losing it, whereas England seem to want to keep possession and build up their attacks more slowly. Greg. Bremner beating ball, but Storey getting in before Bremner. Bremner seemed to carry through with that one, and he got away with it and got that ball too, but now it's Bobby Moore for England. Looking for Hurst. The Scottish tackling at the back is swift and at the moment pretty sure. But Chivers was surprised, loud, a surprising amount of room there, but Moncur nonetheless back to Bobby Clark. Another way Clark throws the ball in the air when he's throwing it out. Maybe we'll see him do it again. He flips it in the air. Maybe Chivers is too close to him. Curran getting up well. Now Moore. Oh, Cormac. There's Moore delayed. Cormac again wasn't giving him time. As a cross going under Banks' crossbar. Gathered as safely as ever, though, by Gordon Banks from the challenge by Curran. And what a good throw by Banks, straight to Alan Ball. Lee wanting it fast down the right, and Lee's got it there too. Hurst is waiting in the middle, and Brogan covering well for Scotland. So England's corner, it'll be Ball to take it. Chivers has gone into the six-yard area. Hurst is there too, Peters, and Lawler, who scored nearly 50 games in first-team football, is getting there as well. And Peters! Oh, was it there? Yes, it's given! Martin Peters gets that one! And England go ahead after nine and a half minutes. Clark is furious. Peters is delighted. Football was getting there as well. And Peters! Yes, it's given! Martin Peters gets that one! And England. But I think the referee used his discretion there and said, well, it was a penalty or a goal, and I'm giving a goal. Actually, my feeling was that the slow motion looked as though the ball clearly didn't cross the line there, though. But the scoreboard says England a goal ahead, and Martin Peters credited with it. Well, there'll be arguments about that one. Cooper. Chivers trying to turn it back and Peters again. Well, I think Scotland really can claim to be very, very unlucky with that one. The slow motion showing that the ball did not cross the line, but in fact it was handled by Moncur, and if anything, that should have been a penalty and perhaps a reprieve for Scotland. But the goal is given and England ahead. The very thing that Scotland didn't want to happen so early in the game. But now Johnston, they look more and more now to this Louis man. John Gregg going up on the outside. Jimmy Johnston. And Ball putting it back there, Curran with a chance, and Curran has equalised! The back pass that wasn't a good one, and it came from Alan Ball, and Curran there in the mix-up with Banks, making it 1-1, two goals now in the first it was Jimmy Johnson here who tried that ball through which brought about the trouble and there was Ball's pass back. Now look as Banks comes and misses the ball. He went straight for Curran's feet. Curran didn't touch it so it was an own goal from Alan Ball. And only justice too after that first goal for England which was very, very debatable. Scotland back on level terms at 1-1. Moncur, that really has given the game a start. Cormac. And now Martin Peters, perhaps wanting again more time than the Scots would allow him. They're on the move now with Bremner. 
Johnston over on the right if he can keep it in, and he can. Taking on Cooper. Taking him on again, getting Cooper going in circles, Moore going with him. Johnston brilliant there and winning a corner. The goal, of course, that Scotland so badly wanted quickly before their confidence could be too severely punctured. And now really riding on the crest of the wave there. Green trying to duck it on McFarland to get it away. McClintock. Greg. And Brogan making it quite clear that he ought to have the ball back towards Clark, and then Brogan takes it himself. going in with a lot of spirit but in fact although he got his head to it he could only steer it into touch and it's England's throw very impressed though by the way that the Scots are coming for England they're giving them no time at all to settle they're hustling them all the way Bremner now to Rob and Bobby Moncur couldn't quite reach that one over on the left and it'll be England's throw Lola Oh, good ball there by Lawler to Lee. Chased by Green. That's the sort of spirit that Scotland uh, want to find this afternoon. But there's a good piece of play there for Story to turn it across and Moncur to put it behind for the corner. Rain now really beginning to come down. We've had uh, some sunshine earlier on and now we've got the rain. Moncur trying to organise that defence. Chivers there, Moncur doing a bit of pushing on Chivers. The corner coming across, it's coming out to Lee. Now it'll come out as far as Bobby Moore. Swept wide to ball with a lot of room. And again across, Lawler right in there. Chivers looking to get to it as well. And now Cormac again. Back to Clark. Terry Cooper. Hurst. And Johnston for Scotland. McClintock. And he goes and a free kick to Scotland. And away goes Johnston. Pulled down by Peters. The referee there having a word with Peters, or perhaps he was getting in very quickly because he saw that Bremner wanted to have perhaps even more than a word with Peters. But I think that's going to be the fate of Jimmy Johnston because he jinks so swiftly past people that they're taking him, even though perhaps very often they don't intend to take him. Brogan, Green, Brogan again. Ball coming back fast, but that's a goal kick. <coughs> and the shower that we've had, which is now... Uh, subsiding well I would think probably is smarten the turf up even more get that ball skidding across it and the game which has already started at a furious pace with 1-1 after a quarter of an hour will probably stay just as fast from now on in Rob getting there with his head but now it's Lawler for England Story Moore pulling down Rob and a free kick Should skid away for the goal kick. John Gregg, one of the back four now for Scotland, Billy Bremner, who's very industrious in the middle of the field for them this afternoon. And here's Bobby Moore. Straight onto the head of Tony Green. Green finding Johnston. Strong challenge there from Johnston. That shows the power of the man. He went through that challenge from Story. Got a feeling he's going to cause England all sorts of problems this afternoon, as though he hasn't already. Here's Bremner. Greg again going on the outside of Bremner. Bremner crossing it now, and Curran looking for that with his head, but McFarlane fractionally before him. And now Lee for England. 
And it's Rob, of all people, the number eight, who's pounding back there to uh, try and stop him. And a foul against Francis Lee. A customary look of silent suffering on his face, Francis Lee, but uh, he was fouled. Story with the free kick for England. A lot of jockeying on the far side. Hurst is there jockeying. Moncur getting ahead to it well for Scotland. Bremner now to bring it out of trouble to Brogan. Pass that really gave uh, Green so little chance. The angle wasn't a good one, and Story could come thundering in. Bremner's throw. Green. Well, the game allowed to go on, and Alan Ball there trying to get Jivers away. Moncur allowing it to go through to Clark. Clintock, slipping past Alan Ball. Jimmy Johnston, beaten that time by Peters. Ball unable to control that one, and McClintock to Rob. Johnston, whoa, past Cooper. Look at that. Jugglery there from Jimmy Johnston, and then a nice little pass to John Gregg. Back to Johnston again, ball closing on him. He's beaten ball, but he can't beat Cooper because Cooper was in quickly and severely, as he knew he had to be. Of course, they had some tremendous battles too in the European Cup last season when Leeds met Celtic. Brings life to any football field, that little fella. And here's John Gregg. Cormack. Johnston again. He really seems to be in the mood, and it's Gregg. Oh, that nearly came through for Bremner, and a missed kick there by Lawler, but... Uh, it's with Banks. Moncur v Hurst. And fairly physical it is, too, with uh, Moncur coming into the back of Hurst. Chivers now at a, on the far side of the penalty area, looking for something from this free kick, which Bobby Moore will take. Hurst and Peters are also on that far side, making a move. P Hurst has come towards the near post. That's aimed towards Peters and Chivers. So Bobby Clark with the goal kick for Scotland. Rob nodding it on there, looking for Green. Now ball for England. Ball to Hurst. Played almost into the path of ball and stopped beautifully though by Moncur. Tony Green. Green playing it there for Rob. Bremner. Johnston. Inside, outside, inside again, and a flick through that very nearly got through to Curran. And now Cooper. Goes out to Lee. And out of play. Twenty minutes gone, 1-1. One, one. Martin Peters for England, Hugh Curran for Scotland. Billy Bremner, story in very quickly, Bremner over his own head but into touch for England's throw. Moore, Lee just getting ahead to it to flick it on but Chivers again very well watched by the Scottish defence this time by McClintock. Now Bremner, a long sweeping ball to the chest of Cormac. Cormac prepared to take on Lawler, but his shot wasn't a very good one. But two Scottish wingers here, Johnston and uh, Cormac, both prepared to take on defenders. Ball. Hurst going hard and McClintock going with him. 
And Moncur there to get Scotland out of a spot of bother. Oh, straight to the head of Peters. Chivers, back to Peters. Played there for Lee. Ball. Greg chasing him out well, though. Cooper. And in goes Rob. So it's Scotland away once more. Johnson is up ahead of him. Curran is in the middle. Here's Curran. And Green has made a good, lively burst through the middle as well. That's a good ball there from Green, and it very nearly got Curran away. Tony Green, who looks so busy on Tuesday night and looks very effective today, with Bremner in the middle of the field. Scotland giving quite as good as they get in the middle of the field with, uh, with Green and Bremner. Supported, of course, by Johnston with uh, Rob as well. And here's Johnston with Greg outside him. Bremner. Now it's Greg. A deep one, and Banks should go for this one. Just a fraction before Cormac. Banks, who had the ball kicked out of his hands last Saturday, uh, controversially in Belfast, very nearly getting the same thing there. Brogan and Green, sending a nice little dummy to Johnson, who seemed a moment ago to be limping. Ball now. And now Chivers. Wanting McClintock to come for him, still Chivers. Ball, Cooper. That didn't come off very well for England, it's John Gregg for Scotland. And Jimmy Johnson is limping at the moment. Maybe he'll run that off fairly quickly. Green. Getting his pass in before Story could get to it, but Banks should be for that one. Chivers rising beautifully there, but he couldn't... Yes, he did. In fact, he found Peters because a couple of Scots hesitated. And now ball to Hurst. But Brogan was very determined indeed, and Curran is offside. The referee, who's been very quick to stamp on anything. Really must be a question mark about his decision over that English goal, but still. Cooper. And now it's Brogan. Story. And now Brogan again. Story once more fighting for England. And it's Lawler to ball. Chivers. Oh, some feet were flying there, but Chivers found Lee. A little one, but Story's gone right in there. Peters, can he do anything? Oh, was he flattened by Greg? No, he wasn't, says the referee. And the ball going in to touch off Cooper, with uh, Peters getting up rather aggrieved. Greg, very lucky indeed to get away with, uh, without anything being given against him. Well, of course, it could only have been a penalty if anything was given. But Scotland survived, John Greg with them, and it's still 1-1. get on that one, that fell nicely for Ball, what a nice little pass there for Lee. Can he belt this one? Still Lee going on, they're lining up for it, and Clark tipping that over. That was a fine piece of goalkeeping. Lee, who worked superbly, I think, wanted to put the killer punch in, but Hurst got a foot there first, and Clark got the arm that punched it over. So Ball with the corner. Chivers trying to go by the near post, and Scotland were in trouble again there. And I think that might well be another corner, indeed it is. Nine's been in a bit of doubt, but the referee said that was another corner, and so Ball now to take another corner, aiming towards Chivers once more, no doubt. There's Chivers going from the near post, and Clark getting that in his arms. He wasn't exactly helped by Greg. And 
now it's Bremner for Scotland. Oh, an odd ball there by Bremner, going right across that line of Scottish defenders, but also perilously close to one or two English attackers. Now Lee, laying it off for Hurst, and now for Ball. Hurst again, trying one on the turn, and Clark stretching out and grabbing that one as England begin to move a little more smoothly. McFarlane and Cooper. And no fewer than two, perhaps even three, England players offside. Lee, Hurst and Chivers. Beautiful run by uh, Francis Lee a moment ago. He does seem to revel in those tight, close situations. Lee again, such a fierce competitor too. Oh, he was pulled down from the back by Bremner and a free kick to England. Bremner anything but ten yards off the ball, but I think Bobby Moore, who likes to get on with it, take these free kicks quickly. Lee again. Chivers. Fintock going across there, number five. But Chivers beating him off. Well, that wasn't a good one to finish off with, and it sends Tony Green away for Scotland. Now Raw. To Brogan. With Cormac outside him and Bremner ahead of him. Peter Cormac. Brogan. And that story is not a good one from Brogan. Lee. Looks as though Lee also, like Johnson, is getting in the mood for this one this afternoon. It's with Cooper. And England throw. Cooper with it. Bobby Moore. All played inside for, by Cooper, straight to Cormac. And Curran ahead, but Curran outnumbered. And McFarlane. Ball making himself available for that short pass. Hurst, chased by McClintock. Story. Cooper free on his left, there's the ball aimed towards uh, Cooper, but in fact hitting Johnson on the way. And so now it's Davy Robb. All shaken off that ball by uh, Lee. And Brogan now putting it for Chivers to hammer it. And there it is! Martin Chivers! A mistake in that Scottish defence by two players. Robb in the first place and by Brogan in the second. And Chivers making no mistake with the chance that came his way. Well, in fact, it was Francis Lee here who won that. And he doesn't fancy that tackle and keeps out. But in the end, he gets the break. And Martin Chivers in that position, look where the shot's from, and look at the accuracy and power. That's why Chivers is in the class that he is. So Chivers, in his fourth appearance at Wembley, has kept up his record of having scored in every one of those appearances. Two against Villa in the Football League Cup, a goal against Greece for England, a two goals against Malta for England, and now one here against Scotland, and England leading 2-1, and Chivers in possession again. Now Cooper, Peters, and Peters again, back to Cooper. He might be tempted to try Peters again, but no Cooper going on. Greg. And Story versus Bremner, the two hard men. Bremner sliding that one into touch. Well, Bobby Brown in the light suit there and the uh, bench. I think very disappointed after Scotland showing such good form in the opening uh, half hour or so. But they are 2-1 down. Rob. Brogan. Rob again. And now it's with Jimmy Johnston. Rob. Oh, that one was cut out. Cut out well by McFarlane. Flicked on by Ball beautifully. McFarlane again. Ball going into space on that left-hand side, but McFarlane preferring Lee. And England throw. And now it's Story. Good play there by Story, good cross by Story, and nobody at that far post. 
as the ball came begging across. Now Cooper. Now England strikers are jockeying, and Moncur getting there a fraction before Clark, unsettling his goalkeeper a little bit, I would think. And with a greasy ball, he could so easily have been far more disastrous than just the corner that he's given away. So Moncur, number six. There's Brogan with him. And here's England now from this corner. Terry Cooper putting it across and at the far side first. But in fact, it was just off the goalkeeper, Bobby Clark, for another corner to England. England now beginning to move with much more rhythm and style. And it'll be Francis Lee to take that corner. Peters, Hurst, even Cooper's there. Chivers in the six-yard area once more and plenty of blue back for Scotland. Peters will go for this one, but it doesn't go to him. Bobby Moore. Played wide once more for Terry Cooper. Story right up there, and it'll come through to Cormac, and Cormac's miskicked it as well, and McClintock has got it out of immediate danger, but there's Ball on the volley, across the goal, and behind for a goal kick. In fact, one of the lovely things to see is Alan Ball there, although he missed with that shot, back in his World Cup form and his first-class Everton form. He's lively, he's sharp, and it makes such a difference to the England side when he's in that kind of form. In fact, both sides playing fine attacking football, but England on top at the moment. Ireland are leading Wales by one goal to nil. We here in Belfast, and the part-timer Brian Hamilton is the Irish scorer. Ireland one, Wales nil, and here at Wembley, England two, Scotland one. Father with his head to Martin Peters. Story. The cries of England are coming up now as England at last begin to produce the sort of form that. Uh, so many of their supporters had hoped they would produce a lot earlier than this in this championship. But now Green to Bremner, and still a long way to go for England. Bremner looking for Johnston, but Cooper was there. Scotland claim he was tripped, but the referee says no, and it's story then for England. Not a good one. Easily telegraphed, quite quickly spotted by Gray. Well, he'll get another chance, story. This time looking for Chivers. Trying to pound through a gap in that Scottish defence, closed quickly by Moncur. Gray. Green, straight to Cooper though, Ball, Moore, and in goes Greg very quickly, not only uh, intercepts but keeps it into play, McFarlane now to Moore, Moore and Cooper, back to Banks. but Moncur and Brogan. Green. And now Cormac. Nicely past Lawler goes Cormac. Now can he cross it? That's a fair looking cross as well and Moore gets in on the end of it. And Scotland's throw. Jimmy Johnston to Jim Brogan. Johnston again. Back for Brogan, nicely placed for Brogan to try a cross in, but it goes straight through to Terry Cooper, and Cooper back with Banks. battle of the crowds as well, there's a throw from Chivers that looked for Peters, and Chivers now breaking through for England, Hurst in the middle, but that wasn't a good one from Chivers because Hurst was much better placed, Lee putting it into touch for Scotland's throw and although Scotland look uh, energetic enough up front and really industrious and quite inventive in the middle, in fact if anything it's at the very back that they're beginning to let uh, the rest of their colleagues down at the moment Cooper, Chivers, Lee, Ball and trying a little one-two there as Lee goes in on it, 
And the ball given away for a corner by Bobby Moncur. A Scottish skipper under a lot of pressure now. Ball. Played there for Peters. A nice little chip there by Peters and a whale away again by Bobby Moncur. McFarland coming a long way forward and he could well lose it to Brogan. Brogan is a touch. England's throw. From the sort of position where normally uh, one would expect Martin Chivers might uh, throw a long one. First. And a goal kick. put it back to Banks. Good piece of cool play there by the England skipper. And now it's Cooper. Oh, down he goes. That must be a free kick taken from the back again. This time by Hugh Curran. That first England goal, where there is this debate as to whether or not that ball crossed the line. Well, I'm pretty sure in my own mind that it didn't. It hits the underside of the bar there, and you can see, well, you can't see at that speed, it bounces outside the line, and there's no real point, I think, in trying to discuss whether it was in when it was under the crossbar. My opinion, that ball did not cross the line, and the referee, I think, used the, what a referee is able to use in occasions like that is discretion and said, well, a goal, it should have been a goal, so why not let's leave it as a goal? Chivers now, but heading it straight down for Bremner to take it away. Cormack. Oh, having a pushing match with Storey off the ball and the referee in quickly to separate them. And he clearly judges Billy Bremner, the guilty one. Making it perfectly clear, I think, that he won't stand too much more of that from Billy Bremner. Moore with a free kick. Hurst in a bit of space, and so too is Lee on the far side. The Scottish back four not really marking quite as tight as they did in the first quarter of an hour of the stage. Now Cooper. something and now he finds Francis Lee a deep cross again by Lee Peters at the far side to nod it back Chivers looking for it ball just over that Scottish crossbar with a lovely build up again by England that really threatened to pull that Scottish defence apart beautiful piece of heading back though by uh, Martin Peters which uh, started the whole thing off Peters, Greg, Bremner, and now Lawler. Old Chivers are going on this one, there was a deflection which wasn't very lucky, and there it is, Martin Chivers, another one! With Clark absolutely stranded the goalkeeper, and that's his fury. It shows the pace of Martin Peters. You see how much he has to make up there. Uh, uh, Martin Chivers, there he is. Look at him racing for it. Goalkeeper slightly out of his goal, and it was just the space he wanted to get it there. He's a sprinter. He's one of the fastest men in the game, and it did stand him in good stead there. So a real bombshell for the Scots, who, if anything, over the first half an hour looked the better side, and now they find, with something like four minutes to go to half-time, 3-1 down, Alan Ball. Thanks to two goals from Martin Chivers. Lee playing it beautifully wide there for Cooper.
ball to Peters. Cooper again. Peters. Not forgetting, of course, when we talk about predictions, that it was that Malcolm Allison said that he uh, thought that Martin Chivers would be the outstanding man on this field this afternoon. Well, he's got two of the England goals. And Bobby Clark with a goal. Rob getting up, Moore getting up, Cooper now. Side against Martin Chivers that time. And Scotland's free kick. It'll be McClintock with the free kick. Rob just getting there a fraction before Bobby Moore, and now Curran going through for Scotland, but uh, England coming back very quickly and Story to get it away, but this time only as far as John Gregg. Good deep cross there by Greg, and at the far side is Tony Green. Now can he flick it back again? He can, but only onto the head of Bobby Moore. Well, Green might get another chance. Fighting like that, he deserved it. But now it's with Brogan. Cooper at the far side, and Curran at the far side, and Cormac trying an overhead. Which are always so difficult for goalkeepers to judge, but Curran, or rather Cormac that time, was a way off target. time that ball goes into the air towards Hurst and Moncur, they are almost like uh, Mick McManus's in, in football gear, wrestling away as that ball drops towards them. There's Johnston, Cormac, and Brogan to Green. Brogan again, just keeping that one in. Francis Lee forlornly saying, was it out? But it wasn't. Johnston, taken by two English players, Story and Ball on a free kick to Scotland. A minute to go to half-time now, and if Scotland to get back in this game, what better time to do something about it than now? With half-time, no more than a minute or so away, and 3-1 down. The Dutchman desperately trying to tell Billy Bremer in one breath to not to take the kick until he gets the wall back uh, ten yards, and then tries to get the wall back ten yards. Story and Hurst, and Bremner trying it... And in fact, flicking it off the referee. Oh, well, that nothing is going for Scotland this afternoon. Brogan was free on the left there. And Bremner's little kick hits against the referee and falls to an English foot. McClintock letting it go out and into touch for Scotland's throw. Johnston, Story, Hurst. And that's stopped by Greg. Brogan. Johnston again. All through the legs of Francis Lee, and away goes Johnston. Lawler and Storey trying to cover him. Inside for Bremner, flicked on again for Cormac. And the whistle's gone for half-time, and a highly satisfactory first half indeed it's been for England. Leading by three goals to one, two of them by this man, Martin Chivers. The other one, in fact, a disputed one by uh, Martin Peters. And the Scottish goal... Credited on the scoreboard, certainly to Hugh Curran. We have a slight doubt in our mind that it might even have been an own goal by Alan Ball. But certainly Curran is the one who's been credited at the moment officially with it. Chivers and Lee coming away towards the tunnel of the dressing room. And so there we are. That's the half-time situation. England leading Scotland by three goals to one. We take a break now, and after that break, we get the half-time verdict of the panel and then full and uninterrupted coverage of the whole of the second half. England three, Scotland one. We'll be back with you in a couple of minutes.
team now coming out for the start of the second half. The Scots with them as well. And England leading by these three goals to one. And so Wembley's record of uh, always producing goals when England and Scotland meet here is certainly being upheld this afternoon. Five goals we've had the last two occasions, and already after the first half we've had four. So Scotland now have brought a substitute on, that's uh, number 15, Frank Munro of Wolves, in fact, who came on as a substitute against Ireland on Tuesday night as well. The one person I can't see is Hugh Curran, the striker, the man who scored the Scottish goal, in fact, was injured just before half-time, so he is off. That won't help Scotland in their efforts to get uh, more goals because uh, Munro, of course, is a defender. But now here's Green. A uh, good and spirited burst there in these opening seconds. And Cormac turning it in. Rob mightily trying to get to it with his head and Terry Cooper to bring it away for England. Challenged by Bremner, but still it's Cooper. Burst in a lot of space. And Lee in even more space over on that right touchline. Chivers now. Ball. Still Lee in space over on the right. Here it is now with Lee. Storey has gone forward. And tried to turn that back for ball, but in fact it was Brogan instead. Green to Jimmy Johnston. McClintock. Greg. Looks like they pushed Bremner up more and more as a striker now. Lintock, Johnston. There's Bremner looking for that one, but beaten away by Storey, and now it's with Cooper for England. Rowe getting ahead of that one, but it's straight to Alan Ball. Ball now to Chivers. Ball surprisingly not going out of play after the way Munro had challenged Chivers and got it. But it's with Cooper. Ball. That one did go out of play, and so it's Scotland's throw. And it'll be Frank McClintock to take it right on that halfway line. Greg to McClintock. Cormac, but Cooper, a long way back for Banks. buzzing around there just ahead of him and here is Jimmy Johnston quickly to his feet again Greg is outside him still Johnston not making too much progress now he's trying to get past Cooper and Cooper doesn't like it and Bremner is offside with Gordon Banks. It's not his throw. Oh, meeting Rob in the 
here. Peters now to ball. Lee again, beautifully unmarked from the English point of view on the right, but that pass swept out there by ball. Too far ahead of Lee. McFarland pushing into the back of Cormac, and Scotland's free kick. Billy Bramler to take it, and McClintock's gone plunging forward this time for Scotland. Green. Played for Brogan. Cormac. Good play there by Cormac, and Rob trying to get his head on the end of it. McClintock fighting for it on the edge of that English penalty area. Johnston now to Greg once more, flicking across that English penalty area again. Cormac rising for it, but Lawler getting it away to ball. And into touch. England's throw. Lee. Bremner and Brogan couldn't keep it in. And Lawler must have hit Bremner as he went through, but uh, a quick shake of the hands as Bremner got up. Green now for Scotland. Cormac. and looking to get to that one, but in fact it was the boot of Moore that got there first, and Green shrugging off that challenge from Moore. Green, who's had a fine game for Scotland so far this afternoon. It's all of a question, really, of uh, whether or not he runs out of steam. Midfield player who's shown such pace when he's gone and taken on men, and uh, quick in thought as well. But now it's Alan Ball. And now Hurst. And Hurst allowed that one to run, and it gave Scotland a moment or two to recover. In any case, Hurst was fractionally offside. Tony Green, the Blackpool, short in stature, but uh, he's got quite a heart on him. And he really does attack men with some pace, and he's got a quick little mind, too. Ball, Lee. Now, Lee, will he take on Brogan? Brogan just flicking out a foot, rushing it there, away from Lee, but into touch. for Cooper. And Lee will get in on this one, but Monker there, Peters! Which, in fact, would have been so reminiscent of the uh, first goal that he scored in the World Cup final, into that very goal when there was a deflection out of a German defence that time, and Peters falling in on it. But, in fact, he didn't make very much of that half-headed clearance from Monker. Cormac to Green. Played for Brogan. Green again. Still looks so full of energy, Tony Green. And he almost got a shot in there, and Banks is coming out quickly as Green went on. Brogan being pulled back by uh, Chivel. Free kick. Well, McFarlane there, and Bobby Moore to take the kick. Not a very good one because McClintock read it quickly and intercepted it. But a quick interception there again by Lawler, but an unfair one, says the referee, and Scotland's free kick. midfield play by Green and that one bad miss by Martin Peters. But here's Jimmy Johnston. Stopped by Lawler. Ball. Flicked in towards Chivers. Beaten off Munro. Now it's with Ball. Story. 
played first time across the field where there were two England players waiting, and this Martin Peters who's got it, and Terry Cooper now over on the left. The cross towards Hurst, flicked on, Chivers the hat trick! No, disallowed. Offside says the linesman on the far side. Well, we can look at it now and see what we think, whether that was offside. Certainly the near defender was at fault. You can see that Chivers is at least level when that ball was flicked there by Jeff Hurst. It would have been his hat-trick, but I think the linesman was absolutely right to disallow it. So now Scotland in possession, now with Frank McClintock. Johnston. And now McClintock. Oh, that almost got through again to Johnston. McFarlane cutting it out for England. The long ball that looks for Chivers. Controlled nicely. Oh, played nicely there with Terry Cooper as well. Chivers away again for England. McClintock is chasing him. Munro is facing him. Flicked in now for ball. Played on again for Chivers going on. And Bobby Clark out of his goal. For Scotland. Green. Didn't quite find Bremner. Bremner at least has got a chase for it, and uh, Lee, in fact, just beating him to it. Good play by Lee. And not a bad looking ball either, the same towards uh, Alan Ball, but on Kerr for Scotland, back to Clark. judging that well, although Rob was jumping before him to put him off. Cooper and Moore. It's a pushing there. In fact, given against Chivers, if anything, it looked to be the other way. It looked as though Greg was uh, going in on Martin Chivers. But the referee's given the free kick to Scotland. There's John Gregg. And it'll be Munro to take the uh, free kick. Scotland. Substitute on for Hugh Curran, one Wolves player for another. Rob getting up, but straight into the chest of Lawler. Lee. Pass Brogan for Ball, whose appetite for the game really does seem to have returned Alan Ball, as Jimmy was saying in the first half. Here's Hurst for Ball again. Cooper with Peters inside him. That's the ball for Martin Peters. Straight into the body of Greg, and Munro getting it to Cormac. Cormac only running into trouble, though, and the free kick, though, the foul by Martin Peters, and Scotland's free kick. I was just thinking of all the ingredients that are making this such a good game. I mean, the men of the match, uh, Tony Green for Scotland at the moment, and Martin Chivers for England, but also the referee playing the advantage rule whenever he has the opportunity to keep the game flowing. He didn't that time because the ball went to England, but on other occasions he has. And now it's with Johnston, stopped by Peters, McClintock backing him up, Cormac struggling to keep that ball in and failing. So it's England's throw. With about 12 and a half minutes of the second half gone, England leading by three goals to one. Cooper, Lawler. Hurst thundering after it, but uh, Moncur yards ahead of him. by story, but uh, Scotland took possession, so the referee allowed it to go on. Bremner finding Green, in turn, finding Brogan. McClintock, Johnston, selling a nice little dummy on uh, Cooper, but Chivers was coming right back there, almost bundling Moore off the ball as well, but Moore finding Lee. Cooper. Peters going up the left for him, and Chivers is inside. Peters still up the left for the pass. There's the one for Martin Peters. And that wasn't one of Martin Peters' best uh, crosses towards the near post, Jimmy. In fact, he's an amazing player, Martin Peters. He's done. He wanted to miss that open goal and makes a bad cross like that, but he's always in the England team. And he's 
the kind of player I think nobody else can copy. He's a man who always flashes into the match on six occasions and do something devastating, whatever happens for the rest of the game. Well, Scotland 3-1 down, but their fans haven't deserted them by a long way. They're shouting them on as Green takes it up now for Rob on the far side. Brogan beating that uh, ball in that little battle there, flicking it there to try and find McClintock. And a loose ball now, three players going for it, Peters losing it, Cooper going in on it, and the referee's whistle going for a free kick to England. And certainly the Scottish team can't complain about a lack of support, it really has been tremendous here at Wembley this afternoon. The thousands who've come down, disappointed at seeing their side down, but they really haven't lost heart. Story now to ball. Ball trying to flick it for Chivers, but far too far ahead of Martin Chivers. Bremner. Johnston, all heading that straight for Peters. Peters in turn trying to find Lee, but it's McClintock now to Jimmy Johnston again. Green. Bremner. Green had gone on, but McFarlane had read it. But Green is prepared to fight him, although McFarlane is a good deal bigger than he is. Fighting on and on is Tony Green, and it's a free kick to Scotland. The referee shepherding Story away, who wanted to delay that one, but now it's Jimmy Johnston. Not enough power. Well, he's been a little bit subdued after that flashing first 25 minutes or so. Lee now. Brogan getting that one a long, long way away. And Moore and Banks can take all the time in the world to gather it up and get it away for England. Story, very, very aggressive in the middle of the field. He may well have done a lot to subdue Johnston. And a free kick to England, which Greg didn't like as he bundled into the referee, but the referee has given it nonetheless, and it's going to be Martin Peters taking it fairly snappily. Finding ball. Cooper. And that's going to be a corner to England. there I must say Chivers at the near post being very well shepherded there by Monroe and by Bremner there's the corner coming across now Clark gathering it spectacularly in one hand and trouble in the crowd and so that spoiled the policeman's afternoon and just when he was enjoying the game as well but there's Jimmy Johnston Cormac and Lee right back to help out that defence, not helped in any way by Brogan, and Lawler finally putting it away into touch. The whistle, in fact, had gone for the foul by Brogan on Lee. England's free kick. Again, that wrestling match between Moncur and Hurst. Green. And Bremner might withstand that challenge from Lawler, Story, Lawler. And now Cooper. Ball, beautiful position there by Alan Ball. And Peters. England's throw, sort of throw where you expect Martin Chivers to take a long one, but uh, although he was making a run towards there, Peters took it too quickly for him, and it's with Cooper. Now Peters with a chance to cross it. No, he's offside. Cooper, incidentally, they're keeping a very close watch now on Jimmy Johnston, down this right flank. Well, the Scots are still shouting on their side. And now it's McClintock. Good ball there by McClintock to Brogan. Rob getting up for that one. Bremner in a tussle with Storey. And Lawler 
with time enough to get it away for England. Bobby Moncur to Tony Green, going past Peters beautifully Green. Straight into the body of Johnston, play on, says the referee, although there was a suspicion of handball. McCormack putting it across there, Rob going in hard for it, but headed away again by the England defence. Cooper slipping, and then recovering brilliantly for England, finding his skipper Bobby Moore. Ball again wanting it. He really has re-emerged again, Alan Ball. He really has uh, got it all his old uh, appetite and all his flair back. Lee now for England. And Moncur mightily into that crowd. He hasn't missed very much at the back, Moncur, particularly in the air. Newcastle United. Tremendous match Alan Ball's having for England. With Ireland still leading Wales by a goal to nil, scored in the first half by Hamilton. That's in Belfast. And here it's 3 1 to England. Ball, Chivers. And back to Cooper. Chivers again. And Peter's going for that one. He couldn't control it. I don't know whether he perhaps was in two minds as to whether to try and control it or whether to jump over it for Alan Ball behind him. Brogan and nobody there. The game at the moment, if anything, a little bit off the boil. England's uh, snap in the penalty area at the moment seems to have deserted them and Scotland just don't at the moment seem to be able to find a way through. 3-1 then still to England. Here's Lee. Ball. And nobody down there to take it. In fact, although Alan Ball has found his appetite for the game again, he's running beautifully into space, still here and there, there are signs like that of little bits of lack of confidence coming in the second half of the season that he's had. But it looks to me as if Alan Ball is back as an England international. Now it's Cooper. To Bobby Moore. Chivers. And McClintock to Munro. Green. Flick forward for Bremner, nice little Scottish move building up here, Bremner going on. Flick wide now for Johnston, can Johnston do anything with this one? A nice cross there by Johnston, banks with his fist! And Ball with his chest. And obstruction by Ball on McClintock and Scotland's free kick. The best Scottish move of the second half and Banks using that, not the left fist, but the right one, to thunder that one away outside the penalty area. But here's Scotland's free kick. The English wall lining up. It's going to be Bremner with it. Moncur's made a dive into that penalty area, wide for Greg now. And Greg losing it to Cooper. Munro to Greg again with a second chance. Cormack and Moore safely back and coolly back to Gordon Banks. Peter Cormack. Ball, and Hurst offside. Exactly halfway through the second half now. Peters and Chivers, two for England. That's their three goals. Curran, the Scottish goal. England, 3-1. And 22 and a half minutes to go. Clintock. Shoved off the ball by Lee. Hurst going for it now to Lee. Chivers in the middle, and Story, in fact, has gone right up there among the front runners for this uh, attack for England. But Lee losing it to McClintock, and now it's with Brogan. Green. Jinking past Hurst. 
Nicely measured pass there by Green for Greg. Oh, not a good one by Greg. He saw Johnston inside him, but he didn't see Cooper, and here's Terry Cooper now, up the left for England. Story. And Moore coming forward. Cooper. Story. Now a chance for Story to cross it. And Munro to nod it away. Greg. McClintock. Johnston. Green. And away goes Tony Green again. Cormack. All are forcing him inside. A push there in the penalty area, but nothing given, says the referee again. As Rob went down, Cormac disappointed, but the referee quite adamant. Brown, the uh, Scottish manager there in the light suit in the middle, must obviously now be very worried with uh, something like 20 minutes left and his side 3-1 down. Difficult times for Scotland, of course, if they do get beaten here, they finish bottom of the uh, international championship, having already virtually been eliminated from the European Nations Cup. Now Alan Ball to Francis Lee. Lee going past Brogan. And Green coming right back to help Scotland out once more. Not only doing some good work in the middle of the field and coming forward. Green that time deep in the defence. Jim Brogan. But Story laying it off there for Lawler. Just keeping it in. On curve. Again, that little flick in the air before he clears it. McFarlane beating Rob in the air. And Story beating Bremner. But the ball going into touch. Just backing up, Brian, what you said about Tony Green. He's very impressive because it's not easy to play in a side that's 3-1 down. And he's continually run, chase, do the simple, sensible thing and keep Scotland's attack flowing. But it doesn't look as if they have the strength up front now to turn this game round and get a draw or a win. Um, Rob is a makeshift centre-forward up there. He hasn't got the height or the pace to threaten him. Now ball, almost put away there by Chivers. getting up well, going nicely for Bobby Moore. In fact, the, the two of them there, McFarland, McFarland and Moore, really do seem to be working out a fine understanding at the back for England. And it's good that McFarland should be so strongly challenged for that number five shirt as he is by Larry Lloyd of Liverpool. Chivers, McFarland and Lawler. Now Hurst. Francis Lee to Peter Storey. Lee again. Still Lee. And letting one go across that Scottish goal. He teased and he teased and he teased Brogan and he finally swept past him and then hammered in that shot. Now it's Munro for Scotland. Brogan on the far side, inside now for Bremner. McFarland again, getting it very quickly indeed. He hasn't missed much this uh, big derby number five. But now it's Jimmy Johnston. Okay, looking across, and again it's McFarland there, getting his head to it to get it away. Tony Green, beating ball beautifully, Green. 
And now for Brogan. The chance for Brogan to measure his cross for this time for Scotland. But Peter's getting down. Tony Green now. Parlam was coming quickly out to challenge him. Green again to turn it in. And this time Peter's to get it away. And England really not getting this ball away properly. McClintock. Brogan. But Brogan shoving the ball out of the way. And England's free kick. Now Chivers. The ball. England still leading by three goals to one. And Greg. Now Rob with a fair bit of space ahead of him. Bobby Moore to cover it. And Peters to cover it. And Cormac now, the central striker for Scotland. There's Cormac. Rob, Cormac getting in each other's way. Across that English goal, and he couldn't quite reach Johnston because the safe and the sure hands of Banks were there before him. Monroe nodded nicely sideways there for Greg. Greg forward to Cormac. Not a good pass by Cormac, giving Johnston no chance at all, and Bobby Moore every chance. Moncur. And now Brogan. to Brogan again and again Brogan's got time to cross it and again Banks is there with those safe hands of his Rob is watching him Chivers this time finding Hurst and on the right is Alan Ball Story Lawler On the far left is Martin Peterson. He hadn't gone unnoticed, not by uh, Lawler and neither by um, John Gregg. Cooper. Moore. Hurst. Moncourt close at hand again. Bobby Moore. That's the ball that'll go to Francis Lee. Now it'll be Lee versus Brogan. And Brogan giving away the corner that time, so it's a corner now to England. And an England substitute warming up on the far side, Alan Clark. But here's Lee with the corner. A low and a hard one, Moncur missing it, and flicked through there, and Peter's almost getting it in, and Hurst between them. Alan Clark, who played, of course, against Wales on uh, Wednesday night. So one of those England strikers presumably will be coming off. Now it's Terry Cooper. A fair old tussle there with Greg as well, and uh, finally into touch. So Chivers, and this is the first long Chivers throw of the game. Again, without any effort at all. Hurst going towards the near post, nodding it back for Alan Ball, and Ball completely miscuing. I think probably it'll be Hurst who comes off. Now it's Brogan. Stopped well there by McFarland, and a good second challenge as well by McFarland. And on comes Clark. So it might be Francis Lee, in fact, who's going off. Even at the moment, with 12 players on while that was going on, in fact, it's Lee who's gone off. And Alan Clark, the England substitute, who's on. Here's Bremner. McClintock had gone up almost unnoticed on the far side, but Lawler got his head to it first, and that's Clark's first touch of the ball, tripping over it. Moore. for this one but Moncur has gone with him now has Chivers the strength and the skill to fight off Moncur well at least he's got the skill to find Martin Peters Peters trying to turn it through for Clark now can Clark turn that one in down he goes Peters to turn it across again ball he cannot fail but he has how did he miss that
that one, he doesn't know, and Clark had a beautiful chance before it. Well, there's been a bit of discussion about England not snapping up chances, and with that one of Martin Peters, followed by that one of Alan Ball, you can see the reason why. England should really be annihilating Scotland now by a tremendous score, but they will not rub their noses in the dirt when they miss chances like that. So now it's Cooper. And now it's Moore. For Lawler. Clark. And now there's just about 11 minutes to go. With England still leading by three goals to one. Tony Green. Nobody's played better than that fella today. And there's a good ball that finds McClintock. Greg is storming up the right for Scotland. And men are waiting patiently in the middle. Among them Jimmy Johnson and Paul Mack who just failed to get their heads to that one. Tony Green now to pick up the loose one. Turning it back again, McClintock's gone in for this one. Cormac's there as well, and Bobby Moore to get it away, as far as Clark. Chivers, Peters. And Scotland have got a substitute uh, on the far side as well. It looks a bit like Drew Jarvie warming up. Story, ball, Peters. Story again. Now Peters, can he get to this one? And he can't because Monroe was there first. There's Drew Jarvie, the number 17 of Adrianians. Brogan, Cormac, and Brogan again. Oh yes, he's kept it in. The linesman's kept his flag down. Johnson is up there with him. Still Brogan. Back for Cormac. Oh, and Johnston very nearly got hold of that one, but McFarlane was there just a split second before him. Cooper not seeing Rob pounding up behind him. Greg. McClintock. And Johnston again. A little flick wide there, and nobody was there. And Moore looks for Chivers. Monroe was challenging Chivers hard. Bremner. Clintock. In goes Cooper, perhaps two-footed and a little too hard. And it's Scotland's free kick. And if Scotland can make one of these raids count now, then my goodness, we can have a finish. Nine minutes left. England 3-1 ahead. Bremner to turn it in. Moore to nod it away, but not very far. Green right in there. McFarland in there. And Clark casually on his body. And away towards Hurst. And away goes Hurst, trying to get inside Moncur. But Monroe who has done a good job there at the back for uh, Scotland in the second half. Johnston. Straight to Peters, though. Ball now. McFarland. Ball. Played wide for Hurst, and Hurst will chase it, but he'll chase it in vain. Scotland want to bring their substitute on now. And in fact, it is Jarvie, Drew Jarvie of Airdrie coming on, who's had a good season. He's a, a man who likes to score goals. And a certain debate at the moment as to who's coming off. It looks as though they might be taking off Tony Green. What do you make of that, Jimmy? I just don't know what to make it. I thought if they put Drew Jarvie up the centre and pulled Johnson out to a wing, they say he's the, maybe the greatest winger in the world, but even a winger needs a wing to play on. He's and, uh, drifted up the front because there isn't much pressure in the middle and the uh, Scottish line looks very disorganised. And the crowd rose to uh, Tony Green as he came off. There were even some boos amongst the Scottish supporters. Well, he's had a tremendous Wembley, Tony Green. Chivers. Bremner to McClintock. And now to Brogan. Bobby Moncur. But Scotland stopped in uh, flight there, Moncur was, and so it's a free kick to uh, Scotland. Jimmy Johnston. 
Well, he couldn't take on Clark and Ball and beat them both, and Ball has found Chivers. Out to Hurst. Into Ball. Six England forwards coming, or at least six England players coming forward now as Clark takes it up for them on that right touchline. Still Clark, and in with a shot and across that Scottish goal. Crowd beginning to go away, probably disillusioned Scottish spectators. Frank McClintock. Slow hand clap, which I notice is coming more and more from the Scottish supporters' end of the field as Drew Jarvie now takes it up, slips McFarlane, and that hasn't been done many times this afternoon. A little touch inside for Cormac, but again over that English crossbar. Slow hand clap, which is coming from away from our left, which is predominantly the Scottish section. Now Lola. So 3-1 with just five minutes now left. McFarlane getting out of trouble nicely there as Jarvie was coming in quick on him. And now it's with Bobby Moore. Chivers off in chase. Munro there with him. Chivers. He's got his Tottenham teammate Martin Peters there. First time played in there, but Clark. Getting it before the other Clark can get there, Bobby Clark and Alan Clark. Moore. Lawler. So England's throw. Hurst with it. And now Clark to ball. Hurst, Clark, and Moore. Cooper. Chivers again going for it, beaten by Monroe in the air. Clark now can turn it off for Peters to hammer it just wide. Oh, another fine English move, and Peters no more than three or four inches wide with a really glorious drive and a fine, subtle build-up. Greg for Scotland. A little over three minutes left, and Scotland still 3-1 down. Greg. Rob. Rogan. Rob again. Stopped again by McFarland. Lawler. Ball. Clark, McFarlane. Well, that really was a little too ambitious. No chance, really, of it coming off. And here's Drew Jarvie now for Scotland, leaving it for Cormac. Cormac running into ball, and now Cormac again. Lawler. Ball. Clark. Ball. And then a change of direction to uh, Martin Peters. Cooper labouring a little bit as he goes up the left, but still willingly going up the left for Martin Peters. And here's Terry Cooper. All oh, going past that challenge of Rob with time now to cross it. Terry Cooper and Moncur almost giving away a corner. Munro, in fact, getting it away. Into touch, England's throw. Story. Moore. And over Peter's head, and he didn't seem to care too much about it, let it go into touch for a throw to Scotland. Both sides now looking very, very tired indeed. Greg, and it's Scotland who've got to lift, them for, lift themselves to something a bit special now, with under two minutes left to find those two goals. McClintock being harassed there by Clark. Moncur.
Fintock losing it out that time to Clark, and now a chance for England to make a swift break. Clark now with it. He's got Chivers on one side, and Hurst is offside. The Lions are with this flag up, as you saw on the far side there. So just about a minute and a half to go now, and that's the situation. Two years ago, England won by four goals to one. Now it looks very much as though they're going to win by three goals to one. Lawler back to Gordon Banks. He really hasn't been troubled too much in this second half, but then neither has Clark. Coming towards the end of the game, also in Belfast, with Ireland still hanging on to that 1-0 lead over Wales. And now Jimmy Johnston for Scotland. To Bremner. Johnston. A little flick through there, Cormac, and it wouldn't run for Scotland that time. Back with Banks. Story. Ball. Hurst. A nice little flick inside for Story. Referee looking hard at his watch. And in fact, is blown the final whistle. And so England have beaten Scotland by three goals to one. Two of those England's goals coming from Martin Chivers. And the other one from Martin Peters with Hugh Curran, who went off at half-time and was substituted by Munro, scoring the goal for Scotland. The usual handshakes, one or two exchanges of shirts going on, and England victorious, and of course England also winning the home international championship with five points out of a possible six. Well, Frank McClintock had a glorious day for Arsenal here, not quite such a happy one for Scotland. round off our afternoon of football getting the verdict now of the panel with Jimmy well let's uh, go straight away to Malcolm Allison who predicted Martin Chivers the man of the match do you think he was the man of the match he had a brilliant first half Jim uh, and, and he still causes a lot of trouble in the second half uh, I think possibly he must be the man of the match with uh, that tremendous goal he scored his left foot w what about the general performance of the England team would you say that was an improvement on what we've seen recently I thought it was an excellent performance I thought they completely outclassed the Scottish team and uh, after about 10 minutes of quarter of an hour of the second half, Scotland were never in it with a chance. Paddy Creeran, your side, you've still got their banner on for Scotland. They, Malcolm says they're outclassed and you have said one or two gentle criticisms of Scotland. What do you think about today? I don't, I don't there was no change from the other night. No organisation or anything. Still the same old shambles. They, they played with a bit of spirit and a bit of heart for the first five or ten minutes. When they got the goal, they were still in the game. But after that, it was like men playing with boys, it was. Bob McNabb, the Arsenal side is one that's renowned for its method. What about the method that's in the Scottish team? Do you think that can stand in up? In it? <laughs> there isn't any, is there, really? I, we just certainly didn't see any at the back today. Um, I felt the England players, very intelligent runners, the England front three, yeah. Franny Lee, Chivers and uh, Jeff Hurst, are very intelligent players, will pull you to pieces if you follow them, and you're not intelligent if you haven't got a system to play against them. And they yeah. played two wing halves. Uh, the Scottish full-backs were in fact wing halves and it showed today they just didn't, you know, it's a if criticism because they were played out of out In of fact, position. I think it's fair to say from the whole championships that the Welsh and the Irish organised themselves much better playing against the strength of England. I would think so, yes. They, they, they certainly didn't pull, uh, England didn't pull the other two teams apart like they did today. But you know, Jim, that's a crying shame about the home internationals. I think individually probably Scotland have got the best players of the four home countries. But organise, and their whole setup is worse. You know, out of the four teams, I would say they're the worst. The worst of the four teams. What about the players on the Scottish side? Scotland didn't play well because, they say, there's no organisation. You had occasions there when players are running into players. Scottish players running into Scottish players. Yeah. A, a, a particular performance, Tony Green took my eye particularly today. What, you know, playing in a losing side, what did you think of his It was hard to say. I thought Jimmy Johnson at times, but, you know, 
I thought the team manager put a bit of the onus in, in Jimmy Johnson by saying Jimmy Johnson is our race and he's going to win the match and he's going to do this. They've played eight internationals, their last eight internationals, Jimmy Johnson hasn't been included. So all of a sudden he comes out and he's going to be the match winner. I know he's been injured for two matches, but for the last seven or eight matches, he hasn't had a mention. And all of a sudden he's out there, this is going to be the match winner. Malcolm Allison, views on Scotland. Well, I felt that um, Tony Green had an exceptionally good game. I thought Rob tried extremely hard. But I don't think the I didn't think Cormac uh, was up to international standard, and I felt that the back four players uh, really struggled today against the English team. Well, let's have a look now at that goal from Martin Chivers. I'm looking forward to seeing that again because I thought that was a superb goal. He showed all that we think a centre forward should show, really pace and power. And when he got the chance, he hammered it home. In fact, Francis Lee, uh, at this point, I think. As the ball rebounds here, I don't think he wanted to go into that tackle. This one coming up now, he, he, he shied away a little bit, but it went well for Chivers, and you may think that it's easy to put it in from there. First time with his left foot, a real sign of class in a player. Uh, what about him as a future player? I mean, we've seen him done remarkable things, Malcolm. Do you think he's going to be maybe the greatest player in the country? I think he's probably the second best centre forward in Europe. And uh, he's such a massive man, he's got so much pace and so much class that I think he will be a tremendous asset to England. Well, there it is. That's all the talk for the panel. It's now that handsome man there, Brian Moore. Well, we've had a good old day. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as well with us from Wembley. There's still a hell of a lot to come on uh, World of Sport today and a lot for you to enjoy as well. Let's go back and hear about it now from Dickie Davis. Yes, you're so right, Brian, but let me first of all give you details of the other international match play today. Ireland finished runners-up to England in the international table with a 1-0 win over Wales at Windsor Park in Belfast. It was Ireland's first win over Wales in 12 years and a wonderful way for Georgie Best to celebrate his 25th birthday. The winning goal was scored by the Linfield part-timer Brian Hamilton after 26 minutes of a first half in which Ireland pinned down Wales. Ireland carried on their adventurous attacking into the second half, but they were unlucky in front of goal. So let's have a look at the final table. This is it. England retain their title with five points from three games. There's Northern Ireland in second place, just one point behind them. Wales in third place and Scotland right at the bottom, gaining only one point from their three games. Just that one draw. Well, we shall, uh, in fact, be going back to Wembley Stadium next Saturday for an event that, in its own way, is exciting as the match we've seen this afternoon. In fact, for the Gaelic Games, and there we shall see the hurling final. Let me remind racing fans that we shall have the racing results at about half past five. But coming up next, it's wrestling, tag action and two of the big boys. That's in just a couple of minutes from now. <laughs>